This video was a short video uh, providing the origin of a very useful equation of thermodynamics for general chemistry students, the clausius clapeyron equation. So if you haven't already seen a previous video, um, go ahead and actually we can keep that as Q. Go ahead and look at my previous video on um, where we've shown the origin of this equation. In the previous video I called this K. It doesn't really matter because equilibrium Q is equal to K. Uh, so let me qualify that by saying at equilibrium Q is numerically equal to K anyway. So don't be don't be surprised, don't be worried that I've written Q here and I wrote K in another video. It really doesn't matter. As long as you know uh, we have equilibrium. Uh, okay, so we're going to start rephrasing this equation a little bit um, in terms of um, just breaking it down a little bit. So if we take this equation here, we'll start off over here. We can see that minus delta G standard divided by RT, so we just take RT over here, is log Q, which is equal to log P over P standard, where P over P standard, this P is just pressure, pressure under non-standard conditions divided by pressure under standard conditions, where here standard conditions means 25 degrees Celsius and one atmospheric pressure. So this implies if we actually break this delta down, we've got D by DT, so the D and the DT, log P over P standard, is d over dt minus delta g standard over rt okay so we're looking at the temperature dependence of these terms so we've got the term log p over p standard which is this term here we know that that's equal to negative delta G over RT, that's this term here, and we've just added a D by DT to both sides. So we've essentially just preserved the equality of the former equation. And now we can write that equal to minus one over R. So we're essentially pulling the one over R out of this parent parenthetical term because the d by dt acts on anything to its right, but it has to be something that's temperature dependent. And r is not temperature dependent, so we can ignore r from the action of d by dt. So we write the r term to the left of our d by dt term. like this, so again we've just brought the 1 over r outside the, parent, uh, the parentheses, and what's left is just dg standard over t. Okay. You could keep the r over here, it would just mean you'd have to remember not to ignore it or not to worry about it. So just getting into the habit of only writing things that will be acted on by the D term to the right of D just helps you clear up um, any syntax that might be confusing. Okay, so we've got this term here. Um, we need to do a quick aside, so let's recall something from a previous video. So recall that dg is dh minus tds. So this is our expression for the second law. In fact, these are both expressions for the second law. They're just cousins of each other, that's all. 
we could have standard terms for each function. So the expression works at non-standard conditions, it also applies under standard conditions. So we just put a standard symbol above G, H and S respectively. If we were to divide through by T essentially to recreate this function, we would just have a T here, a T here, and then a T here. Now here's where we have to be really careful. Um, obviously the T is going to cancel here, but I really want everything to have a T term. So I'm going to use different colors to make this clear. Anytime I use the black pen, it's going to mean standard. So standard DG is standard DH minus DS standard. Put my T's back in. But now I've got no T term here, so I'm going to write T to the zeroth power. So this is T to the zero, which we know equals one. Anything to the zero equals one. I don't mean T standard here. So it's very easy to skip through this and think it's T standard. Um, if you actually watch all of the video, you'll see this comment that this is T to the zero power. In fact, I can write this uh, maybe a bit more explicitly. So I can say delta G, one over T is just T to the negative one. Delta H T to the negative one minus delta S and I'll use a red again T to the zero. Okay, so we have to be very careful because we're using zeros to mean standard and we're using zeros to mean zero. So we have to be pretty careful. Okay, so what we're going to do with this, we're now going to insert this expression back into here. Okay, so we've got, oh, read that twice. So we've got d by dt. So we'll look at here now. d by dt log p over p standard equals 1 over r d by dt and then we've got this stuff in the parentheses which we're going to rephrase as this material here. So we've got dh standard t to the negative 1 minus entropy standard, I'll use red for clarity, t to the 0, okay. So we can condense this down. We've just got minus 1 over r d by dt We've got this first term dh standard t to the negative 1 This whole term over here um, <clears throat> This whole term here would disappear. Why would this term disappear? Um, well, as soon as the D hits it, it's going to give us zero B. 
because it's got no temperature dependence at all. Um, so if you know a little bit of calculus, you'll know that the, there's a coefficient of zero that will come down. But we're interested, well, this term is going to generate terms, eligible terms that have a temperature sensitivity. And this term, as written, doesn't. So it wouldn't contribute moving forward. So we're just left with our original term. We're just left with our original term which I'll clear the board up a bit and, and we'll conclude uh, on a fresh board. So on the previous board, we had this. I've cleared the board up a bit now. So we had d by dt log q is minus one over r d by dt. And then the only term that didn't give zero, we still need to act on with r d by dt. At this point, I'll just remind you or introduce if, you, if you've never seen it before, one of the fundamental rules of differentiation. This is what led to our previous term becoming zero. So if you take any function x that varies based on y, or any value x that's a function of y, raised to an nth power, and if you actually look at how that function changes, um, I guess I don't need that. If you actually look at how that changes, that x function changes with y when it's y sensitive, then you would take the exponent of xn as a coefficient, and then you would raise the function to the n minus 1th power. So if we apply that here, we're going to have to take our negative 1, make that a coefficient, and then raise it to the t negative 1 minus 1, um, which we'll do now. So it's going to be minus 1 over r. Here n is negative 1, so that comes down as a coefficient. And then we have delta h uh, standard t to the minus 1 minus 1. So it originally was minus 1, but now we've got the minus 1 from it. So this is just the minus 1 makes this negative a positive, so it's just 1 over r delta h standard. Minus 1 minus 1 is negative 2, so that's t to the negative 2. Well, this whole thing just becomes delta h standard over r t squared. t to the negative 2 means 1 over t squared. So if you take a second to look at this expression, um, the whole thing just becomes delta h standard over r t squared. Remember what this was. It was this function here. So it was d by dt log p over p standard. That's the Clausius Colpeyron equation. That's going to be important to us in general chemistry thermodynamics classes.